So Shane Dawson has been kind of taking over YouTube with his new series about Jake Paul. Millions of views, no problem. It's just kind of the center of attention, it seems like, to the YouTube community right now. And it's really sparking somewhat of a debate around whether or not YouTubers just naturally seem to have mental illness or disorder or just something, you know? Like, it's almost something that you need to do this job. And I kind of want to talk about that today because I have a lot of things that I'd love to say, not only about that topic, but about Shane's series in general. So I want to start off talking about Shane's series in particular because, well, it's kind of the whole spark behind this discussion. So I'm glad that, especially since Shane is kind of painting the possibility of these mental disorders and things being part of the effect around Jake Paul, I'm glad that he's trying to take the time to kind of educate people behind what it really is and what all these different, uh, you know, underlying causes can be, kind of defining sociopathy, anti-personality disorders, things like that. I mean, I'm completely fine with that, and I think it's a good thing as a matter of fact, because people just generally, I don't think, are educated on mental health enough, myself included. I've been diagnosed with depression and a few other things, and you know, even I don't fully understand what the whole problem is. Then again, I just kind of try to barrel through everything. I notice, however, that, however, throughout a series, it rather unfortunately seems like Shane Dawson and this woman who is apparently a psychiatrist or a psychologist, someone who is specialized in mental health and treating mental health, they have these conversations for pretty much this full episode, primarily about sociopathy, and they kind of really demonize sociopaths. And yeah, I understand, you know, sociopaths are, you know, devastating to those that, you know, they are surrounded by. They really harm the people around them. They're manipulative in their actions and stuff. Just, they cause a lot of damage to people. They can destroy friendships, relationships. It's not something to be taken lightly, but I mean, it's not something that these people can help. It's not like they set out to be sociopaths. This is just something kind of hardwired into them. And demonizing them and talking kind of about them in the way that they did was especially unprofessional on the part of this psychologist, okay? Because she actually, and I directly quote, said that after talking about the symptoms of sociopathy and comparing them to a quote-unquote normal person, she needed to take a shower, or she felt like she needed to take a shower. You know, as somebody who it's their job to diagnose these things, help treat people, and try to lead them on a better path with their mental health. Saying things like this, especially in such a public light, as a YouTube series that is guaranteed to get probably tens of millions of views when it's all said and done, honestly just shows an extreme lack of care for the issue to me, and I feel honestly, like if you can say these things in public, what do you really think about the people you're treating in private? I'm not like mad or upset about it, I know there's a lot of people who are really upset and mad about it, I don't feel that way about it, I'm just kind of disappointed because Shane put a lot of work into trying to normalize, not even normalize, but try and like help people understand about mental health and then for her to say some of the things that she did and to paint them in such a negative light for a condition that they can't help just is not right, you know, it's just not okay. And on Shane's part, the editing of that episode, I will say, was way over the line. He tried to edit it like a TV show and make it this scary, kind of creepy thing, and th th that also just isn't right. I mean, if you're really trying to get people to understand the issue, you don't need to edit it all fancy like that. Not even fancy, just so over the top, you know? You don't need to do that. People are very capable of understanding things without all this flashy, creepy text, the sound effects, the glitchy cuts, and stuff like that. And I'm glad that Shane did his part and admitted that this was wrong and that he was going to take extra time to edit the rest of the series to make sure he didn't repeat this mistake. But honestly, I do, and this is one of the rare, like, actual situations where I will actually call for someone to apologize for something. I think that the woman he talked to should apologize for the way that she talked about these symptoms and people with these symptoms, you know? Because if you're a sociopath and you already are out to get pretty much everyone else and you feel like everyone else is kind of out to get you, so you just manipulate them and stuff, I can't imagine watching that video and, and thinking, you know, wow, this is really what the therapists think of me. That just kind of discourages getting help for your mental issues, you know? I I mean, that's just my personal opinion, of course. Seems like a lot of other people share that same opinion because, well, 
there was a pretty big issue taken with the episode. Overall, I do think it was good, but it definitely did have those flaws. And it did bring up a really good question, like how many YouTubers are really sociopaths? Is there like a predisposition, I guess, to having mental issues and being a YouTuber? And I want to talk about that. And of course, this is all just personal opinion. Honestly, I don't know if there's any fact or research to back this up. I doubt that they've ever done a study on YouTubers to see, you know, what percentage of them are sociopaths and things like that. But I personally do feel feel like to a certain extent to be a very successful YouTuber or to, you know, normalize this as a job for yourself, you have to have either mental illness or you have to have some developing symptoms of mental illness, if that makes sense. Because YouTube is a very self-obsessive job because most of our channels are per like they're literally extensions of our personality. These are some of the most personal creations we've ever made, if not the most personal things we've ever created, or our channels and all of our content. So obviously you want your content to do very well, both view-wise and you know, getting people hyped up for the next video or enjoying your content. Whatever your mission really is behind it, they're all, you know, kind of able to be, I guess, lumped into the same thing. You just want your channel to succeed. I mean, that's just so obsessive I mean you, you make constant videos you upload them and then for hours afterwards you're checking the analytics you're making sure the video is not demonetized you're reading all these comments seeing what people have to say about you about the video about your channel about how it you know relates to a different video or something you're constantly obsessing over this little extension of yourself on the internet that's literally public to billions of people to a certain extent I don't think that a very perfectly mentally healthy person could be able to do that I don't think any human on earth is really quote-unquote mentally mentally perfect, but as perfect as human like humanity can get really. I think they're pretty much I would say out of the range of doing YouTube because there's people who just can't self-obsess over things like that and they can't hold their attention to something like that for this long and this intense, you know? So, you definitely have to have some sort of just issue with self-confidence I would also say is a big part of it because you're always checking your stats and stuff you're always afraid that the videos are going to fail you're always wanting to make sure they're doing right and everything I feel like that kind of hints at some self-confidence issues in pretty much all of us because I mean if you're really self-confident you wouldn't worry about that stuff and I mean, as a YouTuber, I don't think I've ever spoken to another YouTuber who's like, yeah, you know what, I don't even check the analytics. I don't check my view counts. I don't check and see how, you know, people are reacting to my videos. And I've talked to a lot of YouTubers. I've talked to a lot of prominent YouTubers, channels bigger than mine, channels smaller than mine. I just, it seems like across the board, that self-obsession kind of fuels channels. And that's not even really touching into, like, the narcissism the just weird issues that you see on YouTube also. I mean, you see people who get on here and they just, they're psychotic. They're just actually psychotic. I think a perfect example of a person with mental health issues, well, that, that we can pretty much, it's pretty much clear as day, has mental issues, FouseyTube. He literally made up a grandiose story about meeting Drake formed an entire event, lied about all these people who were going to show up here, had it flop, and then changed his name like 90 times. I mean, what didn't he do? The dude is obviously not all there, and he's a pretty prominent YouTuber, and he's definitely not the only one with mental issues. I've noticed that a lot of YouTubers claim to have depression. However, honestly, I doubt to a very big extent how many YouTubers truly do have the depression they claim, because it seems like YouTubers just really only touch on their depression when, like, they're in a slump where they're in some sort of controversy or something. And I've never, I don't think, touched up on the fact that I have depression, but I've been literally diagnosed with the issue. And it's been like a multi-year thing. I didn't go to the doctor once and say, well, I'm sad. And they went, well, you know what? You're just depressed. And then a week later, I was fine. I I'm literally diagnosed with the issue, but how many YouTubers really are? And to a certain extent, you guys could question the validity of my depression because, well, I it's not like I'm going to pull out a certificate here on the microphone and show you guys. And that's fine. You guys definitely have the right to question whether or not I am. I don't really care because, well, the fact is, is that that I've been diagnosed, but I can definitely see how YouTube as a career choice definitely is something I would say attracts people with depression because video creation is a very good outlet for a lot of people. And I mean, most people don't really go into YouTube saying, well, this is going to be my career path. This is it for the next however many years that just kind of happens most of the time. Like I definitely didn't expect for my channel to ever reach like 100 subscribers, let alone nearing 120,000. And especially with over 100K of that coming in the last this year. So I'm rambling on a, a bit here, but 
I do just, I think that YouTubers, when you look at it, are probably a lot more mentally ill than the general population. Just because the career is a little bit more relaxed, it's something that gives a creative outlet. It's not a typical job. You don't have to go in nine to five to a factory and work. So I think that it attracts people with like depression, anxiety, social issues, antisocial personality disorders, maybe even people who have issues like schizophrenia. I think that would be a really good choice for them if they could, you know, actually just straight up choose it. But even then, then you have, of course, like sociopathy. You have people who are out to manipulate people. And even then, YouTube is a really good career choice because you don't have to directly interact with anybody. Your motives can be questioned, but sometimes they can't be 100% proven by anybody but you. You know, Jake Paul, he could get on here tomorrow. Hey, I lost my house and my car, guys. I need you to donate money at the link down below, all of a sudden you'd have, you know, $10 million donated to him where people feel bad for him. And that obviously might not ever happen. He might never lose his house and his car, but if he wanted to, he could lie, said he did film out in a field somewhere. And there'd probably be millions of kids who were naive enough to believe it, who would donate some money to him. There's been YouTubers who've done this on countless occasions who have scammed their viewers and their audiences. You've had, you know, fake iPhone giveaways, gift card giveaways, all that stuff. You know, they're duping people. They're lying about their intentions and they're manipulating people. But the thing is, is that they never have to see him in person so I would say it might even be easier for them to do since it's over the internet which might make YouTube a better career choice for them if that's you know what they're setting out to do overall I do think mental health is a huge issue especially in our country and all over the world even on YouTube I would say it's probably a pretty increased risk I think to a certain extent you have to disassociate yourself with some part of your persona to do YouTube there's just a lot of things you have to deal with that you don't deal with in a typical work environment that just it seems to suit people with mental illness better in my opinion. Shane Dawson's series has been pretty good so far however of course I did criticize that last episode because honestly some of that stuff just wasn't right. I wish the best of luck to anybody dealing with these issues. I wish the best of luck with Shane you know going forward with his series and hopefully fixing the issues people had. If Jake Paul does turn out to be a sociopath I wish him the best of luck man. I wish anybody who has to deal with something like that godspeed in dealing with your issues because that's something that you just nobody should have to deal with. With, you know but it just happens so I guess this was just a little ramble video kind of ranting a little bit and I just wanted to talk about it man because I mean I've, I've been watching this series it's something I've kind of thought about before but never really I guess dove into mentally that far I would say and overall I just think that most viewers get on YouTube and they don't really see that side of YouTube you know the whole who are these people in real life who are these people behind the camera behind the mics we're not often looked at as real people we're just looked at as these online personas that you know they just pump out a video every once every couple days and that just couldn't be further from the truth so if you did enjoy this video make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe if you're brand new around here follow me on Twitter at sub optimist for memes thoughts and updates Join the Discord down below for, you know, just a whole bunch of shit in there. Just know that 1 in 25 of you are sociopaths. Well, most likely a sociopath. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus. Definitely not being a sociopath, because then I'd have to take a shower. And signing out.